Thank you. 
again, we're glad you're back. Um, I don't know if we have any announcements. I do know that just for the sake of, you know, feeling comfortable, there are some people that are gonna wear masks. There are others that are feeling comfortable not to necessarily wear masks. Um, if you're uncomfortable, uh, or if you're wearing a mask, you see someone wearing a mask and you don't have one, maybe just don't approach or put your mask on before you approach them. Just be thinking of other people, I think, is the most important thing. And then whatever you feel safe for is what I think we need to be focused on, right? Okay? And I just said something about seeing it safe and you're just like, eh. So, right, you didn't like that announcement. It's like, I'll be safe if I want to. So, uh -huh. so anyway, welcome back. We are so, so, so glad you're here. Um, the, uh, you know, this is no joke. Um, it's been a very difficult time uh, going through for a lot of people, for a lot of people. And uh, we're kind of coming through the other side of it, um, but we're still not there, right? And so there's a lot of concern for different people, but what do we do? How do we approach it? Well, we talked about this, um, I think, in one of the videos. And by the way, thank you, Joe, for doing a video every week. Um, I don't know if some of you guys um, I was doing a couple videos, and one of the ones I did was talking about the fact that, you know, be smart in what we do, how we approach them. So, as wise as serpents, and yet as gentle as doves. In other words, um, we want to be wise about how we approach things, but don't get, don't get crazy, you know. If you're going out for that last thing of toilet paper, do not elbow that old lady and knock her over. It's not worth it, okay? Be gentle, be kind, loving. Um, but yes, we want to be prepared for things and whatever. So there's been a lot that's been going on um, in regards to what we've been through. And we're not necessarily through it yet, but what we're doing is we are what? Trusting God in the process. We're trusting, okay? Um, it's not something that we have to worry about so much that we would be um, distraught, that we would be, you know, we don't have any hope because our hope is not in this world. And we're going to talk a little bit about that from a different standpoint today, okay? Um, but as I said, the, the, uh, the things of COVID have definitely wreaked havoc with lives. And you know, there's some unseen, um, un, un, lesser known symptoms that have been going around. Okay, um, one of them is extreme hair growth and wings under the hat. Have you seen those? Oh yeah, all of a sudden you look at people going, yeah, those look really great, you know. I don't care how much you tuck it in, they still come out, right? Um, there's also, um, there's also the the ring around this area and lower, okay, the, the, the extreme swelling of the midsection, all right, uh, there, is, there is the impatience that comes with living in isolation, anybody experienced that yet, okay, yes, I know, I see some fingers pointing, they're, they're unaware next to you, but some are pointing over your head, uh, Diane looks right over the gun, I don't know why, why would you do that, Diane? <laughs> which, um, which finger do you do? <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I know which one, never mind, I can't go there. So, uh, and then, I, I know, I was riding down the road the other day, the, the idea of these new phrases that are driving me nuts, together apart, okay? Anybody together apart? Uh, it drives me nuts, I'm sorry, it's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Uh, my, daughter, my, uh, my daughter's um, little one, my granddaughter, used to go to work out, you know, do her gym thing, and so they would stretch. Now, why do little kids stretch? It's like, they don't need to stretch, okay? All right, they, they're, like, they're like bending over and licking the floor and no problem at all, and I'm trying to touch my toes, can't get even close. But anyway, so they would, and so they would, they would stretch, and so they would have their feet together, and then they'd, so the song was together, together, apart, and that's all I could hear when people were like, together, apart. I'm like, shut up! Right? And then I hear, you know, the social distancing. All right, how many people are sick of that phrase? Social distancing. So I'm driving down the road the other day, and I see on a, si on a road sign, I kid you not, so I see social distancing, but then all of a sudden it flashes, social and vehicle distancing. Are you freaking kidding me? Seriously, vehicle distancing? What's the opposite of that? An accident. <laughs> like who comes up with these stupid phrases, okay? So there have been a lot of side effects, as you can see. I'm on the edge, right? <laughs> walking off. But we're okay. But we're okay. Because God does have this. He does. And as we think about the world we're in, as we think about this new normal, which I, I don't even like that phrase, we, what we're seeing is, guess what? 
we're going to deal with this thing until it is what it is. And we deal with it day after day until whatever comes along. But we still can be who we are, and especially we can still trust that God's got this in his hands. Today I wanted to talk, when I was, when I was speaking, and Joe, Joe was speaking every week, and then there came a point where I was getting ready to speak again, and God said, no. I got something ready, I had something ready to say, and God was like, no. And so I was thinking, well, that's kind of weird. And so the first week I just took off, like, you know what? We don't need to speak every week. Joe's got it. This is awesome. And so I took it. And so the next week I had the same thing. I was ready to say, and God said, nope. That's weird, right? It's a little weird. It's like, nope, I don't want you to speak. And so I was thinking to myself, well, why? And yet I had to listen to what was going on and kind of be sensitive to that. And what he said was, in a sense, he said, this is for you right now. This is just for you. And what God had given me was, he had said, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. That's it. And so with that, I mean, there's a lot that I was kind of going through um, spiritually, I think, as well as the whole COVID thing. But as I prayed about it and thought about it, I was like, well, you know, I, I spend time with you all the time, God. I'm, I, you know, we still know that I'm God. And there really came a point where he said, no, 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 think about what that means. And so that's what we're going to look at today. What does it mean to be still and know that I am God? So the first thing we have before we do Lauren is um, the, yeah, Psalms 46. There you go. So if we start at the top of this psalm, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but God is our refuge and our strength. He is who we can go into for refuge. Um, in the Bible, there were refuge cities where someone was coming to attack you, hurt you, whatever. You go into that city and no one can touch you. And so God is our refuge, a place we can go where we can be safe and know that we are solid and secure. And our strength. See, oftentimes we think, oh, yeah, 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 I know, God's got it. But what do we do so much of? As human beings, we, we have to do our part. There's a part we have to do. But if God is truly our strength, there's an essence where we almost have to let go of what we can do. And the more we face these kind of things, the more that we will see and realize that there is some kind of, we can't do anything. There's nothing we can do but to trust in God. So God is our reference strength and very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change. Isn't that an interesting phrase when I read that? Though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake, at its swelling pride. So that whole first section, just talking about God is our refuge and strength, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's happening, even if this world were to vanish, pass away, be destroyed, ultimately we, we know it won't be, because we have, the, we have the word of God, we have the story and how it's going to unfold. So for those who would get, oh, oh it could, you know, but, we don't think that way because we know the story is that God is going to bring this world through some troubling times. And yet we are safe regardless. Ultimately, he brings us to a beautiful place. Ultimately, we have a place we're looking forward to after this existence is no longer what we've always known it to be. And it's God that has all of that behind us. So if we can scoot through. This next part kind of speaks specifically of Israel. And although there is not that specific um, application to us, in other words, this isn't being writ read directly to us, it has secondary application because we are the family of God who's been grafted in just as Israel was God's people. And so we'll come up a little bit more. Um, so as we come to the end at verse 10, this is where I was at, cease striving. And know that I am God. See, striving is the way that this one put it. Be still and know that I am God. So if you go to the next one over, the Strong's Hebrew concordance, that word cease or be still, I thought was so interesting as I looked at its um, many words. The root of the word uh, here gives its many different meanings, and it's to abandon, alone, become helpless, just to become, to cease, to collapse. Talks about courage and discourage to be drawn or dropped, fall, fall limp. 
to be feeble, to forsake, to hang limp, to be lazy, to leave or let alone, um, to let go, to loosen, uh, to lose courage, it even has that aspect to it, just to be, to lose courage in what? Maybe in self at this point, because it says be still. Lose courage in yourself. Uh, to be lost, to put off, to relax, to slack, to subside, to wait. Think about all those words when it comes to saying be still. Because even as God spoke to me and said be still and know that I am God, I went to um, my table and just kind of sat. And there's a sense where our brain still wants to kick in. How many people struggle praying silently? I do pretty good for about, you know, I mean, I can be focused, I can be spot on and know what God, and then that six or seven second comes along, and my brain starts to wonder. Yeah, but I mean, I'm praying sometimes, and what the thoughts are coming to my head, I'm like, oh my God, where did that come from? Like, what am I thinking? And next thing I know, it's almost as bad as my daughter Janelle got married, her brother-in-law gave the speech. His brother took the written speech, put it in his pocket, because he's like, God, you'll do better without it. I'm not telling this guy. So the guy is a complete wingnut. Love him to death. But he's going on and on and on. At one point he goes, and Tim, you got that awesome paintball done. That, that's so good. In the middle of a wedding speech. Right? This is my prayer. This is my prayer life. Like, whoa, where am I? <laughs> and so when I talk about this, I'm saying because be still and know that I'm God. Uh, there's an essence where we even come to be with God, and yet we still feel like what? We need to do something like this. An element where we need to be involved and our brain needs to be plugged in, right? And when I do that, my brain takes over and it goes all over the place. This element of be still, to abandon, to become helpless, to be, to collapse, to stop, to cease of yourself. It's a sense calling for meditation. Now I will say this. The meditations that the other religions will call for is complete emptying of your mind and just let it go wherever it goes. There's an essence of that here, but it's not the same. Because it's to empty your mind, to empty yourself, to just stop and cease. And then to do what? Know that I am God. There's a sense of thinking in that vacuum that you've created to say, what does it mean that he's God? You see, to put him in the position and, and, to, and to give his attributes in my mind became the thing that God started to do. It wasn't necessarily me generating it, but it was like to be able to, to think and know at a deeper level what I already know about God. And the thing with that is, often we'll talk about the fact, listen, as a Christian, you don't have to do anything in order to be loved by God. There's no, come to your Bible every day, and read your Bible every day, and pray every day, because otherwise God doesn't love you as much. That's foolishness. God loves you just as much as he can because of Christ. In Christ you are just as loved as you will ever be, despite what you struggle with. If it was up to what we did, that God loved us, then we'd really have to look very close and say, well, what could I fix today? Because there's always gonna be something broken, right? And so God's like, that's not what it's about. When you work on the things of understanding scripture, talking about it's, it's for us. There's a benefit for us. It's not about our relationship with God. That is done. That's all set. And so when we come to the word and we read and we strive to understand, there's an element that goes on because it becomes a part of who we are. And so as I sat and I said, be still and know that I am God, there was an element where I could already, I already had the things that I could go back to, to know that God is eternal. Okay? Omnipresent. Everywhere present. All at the same time. He's omniscient. He knows all things. All those things that God, you know, has as who he is, the attributes of God is what they call it. That's the fancy word, the theological word. All those things started to flood into my mind and my soul. To be still, to open up my, my, my thoughts and just empty it of and let God do whatever it is he was going to do. And he started to use those things that I had learned in the past. To be able to build and strengthen and say, this is who I am. And in that, there's a sense of knowing. Nothing can attack that. Nothing can change that. Nothing can take away the security 
that him being God brings to me his child. You see, the access that we have because we are in Christ, because we became his children, before we became his children, we were enemies. We were at enmity with him. Okay, again, that big theological word, at enmity. We had been ripped apart. We had been broken apart. And we were an enemy of his in the way that we thought, in the way that we approached life, in everything we did because we didn't know. But when we became children of God through Christ, everything came alive within us. To say you have everything you need for godliness and righteousness. Everything. It's all yours. And that's an amazing thing. Somebody said, I think it's Tim something, I forget what his name is. I don't know his theological bent, I don't know his background, but he said, um, he said, who could come into the middle of the night, into a king's bedroom, and ask for a glass of water? No one but a child. And I would even say no one but his child. That's the kind of access we have to our God. That we could come in the middle of the night, at the worst time, in the worst way. We could be a complete mess. And come in and say, I'm thirsty. And what would he say? Give some water. As we sing our songs, as we worship, as we do the things, sometimes we'll use songs that are not quote unquote Christian. And I've had people ask, is that a Christian song? It is now. <laughs> Why? Why? Why does it become a Christian song? Because of what we know behind it. Because of the connection we have with our loving Father. And how we can plug that in and go, oh my gosh, that, that's Boy, that speaks to me. And you know what's funny about it is there are some Christian songs that if we heard them, but we didn't plug in the truth of who God is to us, really, they would lose all of their meaning. And I thought of this one, Lauren Daigle, and when I thought about this song and the words to it, I said, you know, with God as the background, the song speaks to my heart deeply. Without God as the background, you think about the words, and it would be like, this is like some over-obsessed uh, boyfriend, out of control, like, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, what? Like, I, I mean nothing unless I have you? What? That doesn't sound like a healthy relationship. Well, it isn't if it's not God. If it was just a person, it would be like, whoa, you need some counseling. But if it's God, you got the right counsel. So watch these words. Think about not only what it means in Christ, but also what it would mean without. Him. Think about who He is to you in that moment.
still and know that I am God. You see, when we know him and who he is, even these words take on massive meaning. Because who else could really hold that place to say that? Well, the perfect God, when we know his perfection, when we know his power, his strength, his love, his unending forgiveness, that when I say, when others say I'm weak, you know what, sometimes they're right, aren't they? When they say I fell short, they're right. But in him, I'm not falling short because he said, I've taken you the rest of the way. Without me, you would fall short because God's requirement for heaven, God's requirement for a relationship with him is sinless perfection. And none of us would have that without him. Be still and know that in God. Try that sometime. Just sit and say, Lord, speak to me. Get me out of the way and let me hear from you in that deep voice. Let's pray as we close and then we'll my songs. Father, thank you for your love, for your strength, for your awesome just being who you are. And that, Lord, not only are you that perfect and loving God that is beyond our wildest imagination and endless in all that you are, but, Father, you have brought us into the family and given us those things as our own as well, as an inheritance from you. And so, Father, we thank you that when we're falling short, that you take us the rest of the way. That when others see us as a little bit crazy, you say that you are my kind of crazy. Father, help us to know that, to live in that, and to pass that on to the world that thinks they have to do something to measure up. When in reality, you've done everything so that we can measure up. Thank you for your love, Father. And thank you that we are here in this crazy world. And in these crazy times, knowing though that you have it, and in you we rest. In Christ's name, Amen. How long has that been on the floor? That was since you heard the scratching. Well, the tape, the, this, the tape, let loose. <laughs> We'll it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it is. You all know my grave's going to say, right? It was me. My grave's going to say I died, but it wasn't my fault. <laughs> and if Linda doesn't put that on there, make sure it gets fixed. Oh, it's covered.
great day, a great week. Be safe, and we will see you next week. God bless you.